what basically happened was that the stock market was in love with the idea of the Bharatiya Janata Party led National Democratic Alliance uh, government re-elected being re-elected uh, again for the third time with a thumping majority of more than 350 seats in the Lok Sabha. But uh, from the results uh, that have come in by now, it seems that is not going to happen. And, and any market essentially adjusts for various possibilities and the stock market was essentially adjusting for this over-optimism today and which is why it fell by as much as it did. Uh, the other factor that needs to be uh, kept in mind here is uh, the fact that the market was also betting on the Bharatiya Janata Party getting a majority of its own. You know, the stock market fell by as much as it did and that would have hurt many retail investors who entered the market only after the exit polls came in. Particularly investors who bet on uh, you know, stocks of uh, public sector units or uh, investors who bet on small cap stocks or investors who bet on uh, stocks uh, representing the Adani group of companies which fell quite a bit uh, today. So, you know, given that, uh, what it tells us all over again is that, diver that diversification of investment across and within asset classes remains the best way to invest. Now, of course, uh, it is ex extremely boring, it is not exciting at all, and it is only on days like today that we realize how important diversification is. And the answer to that question is, we really don't know. Uh, simply because uh, of the fact that uh, you know politics is is a funny beast and and a party which is in one alliance at at this point of time may not continue to be in, in that alliance tomorrow morning or day after tomorrow morning so which is why you know it it essentially makes uh, sense for the small retail investors to uh, sit out uh, of the stock market over the next few days So the first point that needs to be made here is that you know when governments in India change, economic policies rarely change, and this is this has been the experience since the economic reforms of 1991. And given that, uh, it is more than likely that the current economic policies will continue. So essentially, what that means is that uh, the focus on uh, uh, increasing capital expenditure, building better physical infrastructure, is likely to continue. Uh, the focus on cutting down on the fiscal deficit, which is the difference between what a government earns and what it spends, uh, which had essentially the fiscal deficit which had uh, gone up post-COVID, uh, the focus on cutting it down is likely to continue. The RBI will uh, continue focusing on controlling inflation. Uh, over and above this, you know, economists and analysts feel that there are two, three other areas that the government, the new government needs to uh, concentrate on. It needs to take a relook at the insolvency and bankruptcy code, uh, which uh, was when it started worked pretty well, but uh, since then, uh, in, in the last couple of years, has not been as effective as it initially was. Uh, then there is uh, also some talk about how uh, you know the government needs to get a little more serious about the performance of power distribution companies across all across the country. Uh, then there is also some talk about the fact that the country needs a new direct taxes code, uh, which basically means that uh, the personal tax regulations need to be relooked at. Uh, the personal tax regulations in India are quite uh, convoluted, and uh, that is something that needs reform. So over and above the reforms that we uh, that we spoke about, there are two things that the next government needs to immediately focus on. Uh, the first obviously is, you know, joblessness, uh, unemployment, underemployment, uh, which uh, has been impacting a large part of the country. And the second is the slowdown in private consumption growth. And in fact, you know, the, the moment the government starts uh, addressing the slowdown in private consumption growth, it also has, it, it will inevitably end up creating uh, jobs as well. 
So uh, basically, you know, if you follow the the GDP data, the gross domestic product data, which uh, is published regularly, you would know that uh, private consumption expenditure, which is the money you and I spend on buying things, uh, grew by just 4% in 2023-24, which is the last financial year, the period from April 20, 2023 to March 2024. Now, 4% on its own doesn't really uh, mean anything. But when you compare it to the fact that this has been the slowest private consumption growth since 2002-2003 when, when private consumption had grown by 2.9%. Uh, ignoring the COVID year of 2020-21 uh, where private consumption obviously contracted. So uh, that was an exceptional, uh, that, was a, that was an exception which, which can be ignored. So private consumption has not been doing well. And why is that important? That is important because private consumption makes up for, if you look at data over the years, makes up for around 55 five to 60 percent of the Indian economy and if that part of the economy doesn't grow at a fast pace the chances of the Indian economy which is which in 2023-24 grew at a fast pace continuing to grow at a fast pace uh, is is low so that is a situation that needs to be addressed so uh, you know, what one needs to understand here is that uh, there are a couple of factors which are working in favor of the next government. The, the Reserve Bank of India has essentially this year given the government a surplus of more than 2.1 lakh crore, uh, which is, uh, you know, a lot more than what it gave the government last year, which was around, you know, a little over 87,000 crore. So that uh, money can come in handy. Uh, over and above that, uh, a lot of public sector units, uh, the banks and oil companies have done very well in the last year. So the dividends from them can also help uh, the government. Uh, then there are two other things which uh, can essentially uh, be used to uh, shore up revenue. Uh, the first is uh, obviously uh, the disinvestment, uh, disinvestment of public sector companies which has slowed down over the last few years. And uh, over and above that, the asset monetization plan of the government where, you know, the government had plans to sell land parcels and things like that, which also hasn't really taken off in the strictest sense of the term. The, a major reason is, you know, a corporate essentially invests when it sees uh, when it foresees consumer demand and you know the moment uh, private consumption growth uh, revives or private consumption essentially grows at a faster pace it increases the chances of private corporates investing more in the Indian economy and when as and when that happens you know the process creates direct and indirect jobs. <music>